Hello, good evening everyone. Yet another short uh, update about the development of uh, PyStorm 68K. And uh, here in front of me I have a new version. This is uh, version 1.6. Uh, that's not final, but uh, this one uh, has some improvements comparing to previous release. And some of you already have this in your hands. I started shipping this uh, a while ago. Effectively, it's the same uh, design as previously with uh, one uh, additional change, which is uh, these um, end channel switch uh, components here. Uh, with uh, the with improvement in uh, the way the switch works. Effectively, before uh, this switch here, which is now just a jumper, would uh, connect uh, power directly to uh, circuitry and uh, in fact the current will flow through the switch which can be problematic in case switch is not reliable and plus uh, the cables, connectors and the switch itself will introduce a little bit of resistance so that will certainly drop uh, impact uh, the, on the, have impact on the drop of the voltage going through the uh, 5 volt uh, circuitry on the board. So to avoid that, now the switch is not touching anything uh, on the board uh, in terms of um, the, the current, the flow of power that goes and feeds uh, uh, logic, but it's uh, rather a um, switch that opens uh, up and closes the gate um, on end channel switch. These are very interesting. If you look at the um, components, they're tiny. Uh, and uh, let me see if I can if I can even record and maybe point with my finger here. And uh, for such a small component, it's incredible the amount of uh, current these things can uh, open and close. This is a modern part used in um, phones, laptops, uh, tablets and so forth. Uh, it's a phenomenal thing. So this is one of the improvements. So just avoid uh, current going through the switch. And um, that's, that's about that. A few more tiny changes on the board. Uh, now the board is uh, strictly one layer. Uh, sorry, not one layer. It's actually the same design. I think it's six layers. But uh, everything is on the top. So all the components are on the one layer, on the top layer. Nothing uh, here. Uh, aside from these two resistors. But uh, that will actually disappear in the next version. I will uh, move these resistors uh, on the front as well. And what you can see here is a little, let's call it a, a, a diagram of, uh, of Pi Storm 68K, so you know which area does what, right? So, uh, for example, you can see that uh, this one is voltage, uh, voltage status, this one controls 68K halt, reset, uh, LED status, and so forth. So you can see uh, these are level shifters, these are um, latches or uh, D flip flops, and, and so forth. So that, I think that's pretty cool. So this is uh, already in the hands of few of you out there and uh, seems it's working fine. But uh, there is one uh, realization that uh, came to me uh, after talking to many of you using the board so far. And that's the fact that if you use a Pi Storm, uh, excuse me, Raspberry Pi 4 uh, or uh, 3B Plus, I believe, these are sensitive to voltage drop and uh, if you have, um, if you supply these with less than 5 volts, uh, it's a problem. And uh, the way it manif manifestation, man the way it manifests itself, it's the, the problem itself. It's the fact that um, the Pi Storm will, uh, or Raspberry Pi will reduce the clock, uh, CPU clock. And um, that will happen on some Amigas as well. Some Amigas will run as well uh, the 5 uh, volt uh, rail slightly under voltage, especially older computers. So for Minimig, the solution is quite easy. There is this um, uh, resistor here. It's, uh, I believe, R12. And uh, it's just below, it's just below here. This is the, the buck and just below here, R12, if you can see where I'm pointing. 
Well, originally I believe it's um, 4K3, but if you change this resistor to 4K7, the voltage of uh, 5 volt rail will go from 4.9 maybe to 5.2, which will solve any issues with the uh, down clocking of uh, Raspberry Pi. So, in other words, the, the whole rail of uh, 5 volts will be slightly increased to uh, save 5.2 volts and it will give a little bit more juice, uh, or not the juice, rather a little bit more voltage to supply to, um, to Pi Store and uh, they therefore as well uh, Raspberry Pi. So, that's, that's, a, that's an easy solution. The other thing that I'm going to do, next version will have optional 5 uh, volt uh, uh, regulator here. And uh, I will leave a jumper in case you want to populate that. You can install the voltage regulator and, um, and other uh, passive components. If you don't want to, um, you don't need to. Because uh, with the Minimig, with this uh, adjustment of the voltage, that's absolutely not necessary. But Still, for older Amigas, or in some other cases, which I don't really know much about, it's a good thing that 5-volt uh, regulation is included. So everything will be regulated here and it will provide um, uh, unique and standard uh, voltage levels. And again, for in terms of these guys, uh, larger boards, uh, this, this is important, not to lose any performance and uh, not to get to the point where uh, this um, integrated um, system on the chip will downclock. So that's about that. Let me show you a little bit about um, how this looks like. So now if you look at this place here, you will see there is a voltage regulation. So this is a voltage regulator, this is a inductor, a little bit of uh, capacitors. Uh, you can measure the voltage here, make sure everything is okay. And here you can uh, position a resistor depending on the um, scenario. If you want to populate this and use it, you can go yes. And if you don't want, you can just put the jumper or in this case, zero uh, resistor here. So it's completely optional, but uh, it will definitely help. Um, I've added a diode here uh, just to kind of prevent uh, some uh, misbehavior of um, of the uh, these parts, uh, Texas Instruments parts, but it, this is not strictly necessary. But it's nice; it's good to be here, and um, everything else stays the same. There's uh, this time I removed these resistors as well, so there's absolutely no passive components on the back side of the board. So it looks like this. Um, I don't think this makes. Um, not a lot of sense, but I don't think this is necessary for Mimic, as I said, because it's so easy to adjust uh, voltage levels on Mimic. But for Amiga computers, I think it might be uh, sometimes useful to have. So, so that's that. I think I will have all the components uh, here soon. So, um, I mean, I'm referring to these uh, resistors, capacitors, and the voltage regulator. So I'll be able to test um, and uh, see how it works. So the other thing I want to share is the uh, progress of Amicube. So this is, uh, this is a new Amicube board uh, with Gen 7. Uh, I didn't do much of the routing or um, even schematics are very incomplete, but um, this is the whole idea. At this time, I'm focusing on the voltage regulation. I'm going to do that first. That's usually the first schematics I do. Uh, there will be quite a lot of buttons. There will be quite a lot of LEDs. And the reason for this kind of setup is that this will be, in many ways, a development board, meaning uh, I will use this, of course, uh, to test all the code, all the Verilog code for Minimig AGA, make sure everything's working well on Gen 7 Xilinx parts. But as you can see, I will include the legacy VGA um, joystick ports, but as well PS2, USB, and HDMI. So the board will be quite... Uh, unique setup with a lot of uh, I.O. Uh, some of the those I.O. ports will be legacy, some of them will be new and uh, modern parts, uh, modern I.O. I.O. interface. So you can connect almost anything. But on the top of that, um, when I say almost everything, uh, anything, I really mean it. So this is the mezzanine 
FNC, FNC, I think it's called FNC PMC uh, slot. And uh, this is the part from Samtech that I'm looking at. This is a huge density of, of pins here. I think we're talking about 10 times 40. So um, considering that I will use a proper part here, this will be uh, Arctic uh, 7 uh, with 100,000 LEs, 600, I believe 76 pins or something al along the, the line of this number. Uh, there will be a lot of pins available that I will just shout here and this will provide um, development interface for I don't know, whatever is needed. Attach real CPU, attach Raspberry Pi, attach whatever you want to do. And uh, really um, provide a modern development tool for AGA, Amiga, and uh, um, go from there. Uh, just to be clear, I am uh, going to design also ATX board. This is the small board called uh, Nano ITX, and this one you can see here there is a hole for VES amount, so it will be uh, VES amountable. One is here. I will have two, two screws, which I think will be enough uh, for the case to be mounted securely on the, on the VES amount. And uh, this is going to be one of those, you know, mini, mini variants. Now, since I've added the larger FPGA chip and uh, uh, mezzanine uh, FMC uh, connector, the thing is, this won't be as cheap as I thought initially, but for me, it's not difficult to spin up a board with, uh, without um, these development elements. Uh, just uh, remove this and switch to a much smaller and more cost-effective part. But um, honestly, we're talking about uh, you know 20 to 30 dollars, I think, difference in in total, uh, maximum up to 50. So it's still not. Uh, crazy jump but in terms of pricing but it will provide a huge amount of uh, you know potential here for development and adding um, adding cards and you know doing all sorts of crazy things with this board making it uh, pretty versatile for the future development uh, not to mention uh, small uh, kind of like uh, compact um, size and um, easy to carry, easy to mount to the screen, etc, etc. So, so yeah, this is, this is it. Uh, don't think it's much. It looks like much, but this is just, uh, you know, components uh, positioned and uh, some very basic schematics. Uh, now, it will take some time for me to do proper voltage regulation. I want to do it uh, by the book, um, following uh, AMD's uh, instructions and the data sheets and make sure that uh, the appropriate parts are in place and uh, everything's hooked up uh, as it should. Uh, and then after that I will probably continue with the SD card and uh, RAM implementation, connecting SD RAM and so forth. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, finally, I think at the end, once all the ports are connected, I will attach a mezzanine card and go from there. So there you go, this is a short update. So we have this uh, progressing. Uh, aside from hardware side, I'm making progress with Verilog as well. Uh, right now the code is in the making for uh, HDMI, but a um, few more things after left. And then this, uh, the whole story about the Pi Storm, this should be totally final version. Uh, I have uh, boards arrived already and I'm just waiting for the, as I mentioned, uh, elements here in this uh, in this box here let's say it so these some of these components are waiting to arrive and once they're here i'll be able to to test uh, I'm, I'm not expecting anything um, you know special to happen uh, any sort of surprises because after all it's done by uh, the example of the, by the schematics provided by the manufacturer but it's always good to test and you know see how it goes. Uh, test with real Amiga, test with Mimic. Um, you know, leave it for at least a couple of days running under different conditions, different uh, temperatures, and this and that, just uh, just to make sure everything is okay. But uh, yeah, seems like we are at the end. So when it comes to Pi Storm, I think uh, we won't go much further than this uh, for this um, version of. Uh, uh, 
deep 64 for uh, 68,000 and, and 4 millimeter. I think it's a perfect fit. I'm quite happy with it. Famous last words, but I mean, you know, let's hope. So yeah, that's, that's that. Thanks for watching and um, subscribe, share if you can. It helps uh, to kind of spread the word about the progress. Once uh, I test 1.8 completely, the um, schematics Gerber files are, will be available on the uh, minimic.ca and uh, you guys can uh, enjoy uh, assembly if you like to do that as well. By the way, uh, take a look at the mimic.ca. There is a fantastic, um, uh, I can say, this is the first piece of uh, instructions and documentations we have for uh, Minimig and PyStorm. This was done by uh, uh, Craig. Uh, Craig. Uh, his name is Craig uh, Daters. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name, Craig, but uh, he's, um, uh, I would say, an expert in... Um, Minimig and an Amiga enthusiast and um, he made this um, phenomenal instruction. So basically following uh, this, uh, I would say, booklet of eight, uh, eight pages, you can go from uh, the prep work to um, flash the uh, required uh, CPLD firmware for Minimig in this particular case. Uh, if you ha if you get this card from me like this, so you don't need to do that because that's already done. But if you want to do so, you can still do it and reflash. And um, the instruction is phenomenal. It goes uh, from from the prep work it has these beautiful graphics here, um, and um, goes step by step. You know what you should do in the in the shell in the bash shell, how to install all the libraries tools. And um, you know what to do with Minimig, what are different cores, what's the meaning of these names. Everything you guys are usually uh, sending um, emails asking me about. Uh, I just never had a chance to make something like this. And um, thanks to Craig, um, now we have it. And uh, at the end, there is a bonus that's AmiKit prep work and setup. Uh, I never used AmiKit. I know it's, uh, it's a great thing, it looks phenomenal. So whoever wants to use Amikit, there is that step-by-step -step instructions, what to do and how to set it up. Um, baby or Amikit setup. <laughs> That's great. I mean, this, I, I love how he did it. He, he, his uh, way of uh, explaining stuff, it's, um, it, it's great. I mean, so this is available at the um, minimic.ca in the, I believe um, I put it in the software section. And there you will find another category which uh, has the software firmware for uh, PyStorm and also this, this particular file, it's a PDF. So yeah, I'm hoping that um, we'll have more and more documentation available. The problem general, in general with me is that um, I am doing the PCB design, software uh, development, assembly, testing, all sorts of stuff, there's simply not a lot of time left to do important things. And don't get me wrong, documentation is super important and, you know, these kind of things. Just, you know, I'm always leaving that for the end, you know, I'm going to do it at the end and then I never do. So, Craig, I cannot thank you enough. I mean, this is, uh, this is just phenomenal and um, it will be uh, of use to many of you out there. Because all of this stuff, setting all this up, it's not difficult once you have instructions. But uh, if you don't, I mean, God forbid, it's, you, you know, you need to go to, through the maze of the internet and find the information yourself. I do email people, help, this and that, but then I end up spending even more time. So it's, um, this is definitely a big uh, step forward. So with that, I think we can wrap up video. Um, Thanks for watching. Uh, again, subscribe so you can be um, updated with uh, everything that happens. Next video will probably be um, progress with uh, Gen 7 AGA core and uh, also I will uh, probably mix up, uh, add a little bit of PyStorm 68 8 version 1.8 final that will be released. Uh, the one with the voltage regulation for 5 volts, optional. And uh, hopefully, um, it will, um, the test will be successful. So depending on that, uh, I, will, I will probably compile something for the next video, which makes sense. Thanks for watch watching and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.